in much more interesting things than permutation group. Actually, I was interested in, in the following problems. What is spin? Second, what is hyperscope? Third, why measures form octet? And many other things. So, what they tell me, the group theory helps me to answer these questions, I would be pretty satisfied and I'll study group theory better. Okay? When I grew older, I also had interesting questions. So I'm raising group theory stuff. Maybe camera will go out of focus, but uh, but then I was interested in many things. In physics, I was interested in what does this Feynman diagram mean? First question, like E plus E minus goes to P plus P minus. Second, I was not very interested, but I studied the following question. Okay. I have to change. I have to switch. So it's an atom, okay? And there is an energy level. And energy level was split into several other energy levels. How it happens and what does it mean? For them, I was interested in Einstein's equation, what does this thing mean? Then I have the equation. Why Dirac equation is the first order? Well, Maxwell equation. Okay, change. I have to change. Four. Why it is of a second order? I was also interested in the fact what is on shell closure of supersymmetry mean? Equations of motion. Well, this could be. I was also interested in the question why Hamiltonians? So I was interested in solitons. And the question was why Hamiltonians in solitons have this strange form? 
y. So these were my questions coming from physics. But I also had questions coming from mathematics. The questions coming from mathematics were the following. What does it mean to go from the intersection theory to the idea of linking? First question. Second question. I always match this table. like this, like this, and very strange move like this. So it's a spectral sequence table. What was behind this? Question number three. Why no Torelli problem? On Kalao Yao manifolds. Question number four. Why number of curves passing through points satisfies quadratic equations? You see, I got a lot of questions, say, from physics, and four questions from mathematics. And uh, you know what I found? I found that all these questions have the same organizing principles that are here in HTQFT. So that's why during my talk, I will not only concentrate on uh, general principles of uh, HTQFT, it's, it's even hard to pronounce, that people are not very interested, most probably. But uh, on explaining why these allowing questions would be understood from that point of view. So, like a lot of questions from different fields, physics and mathematics, put together. So it's, it's kind of advertisement. Now, I need to explain why letter H here is very important. It was like 25 years ago, maybe more, when I got excited with the, the idea of TQFT. So people, it, it was a fashion that time. And they tried to explain it to mathematician. And mathematician told to me, look, this structure, is very poor. What you basically have is something like a ring that is commutative, associative. It's not a great structure. And that's why pure TQFT are not that popular. What can you do with a ring? Okay, you can construct it spectral. 
but it's not such a big deal. So what's important is this letter H. Uh, that, uh, that stands for higher. Uh, that stands for replacement empty geometrical data. It T Q F T. by PTGO such that the functions on PTGO are differential forms on GO. It turns out that this replacement allows you to construct a lot of things. It's very important. Otherwise, the structure is not so big. Okay. Now, now it's interesting that a lot of things could be explained in HTQFT. Maybe it's better to call it HT. However, it sounds like Hodge theory. Unfortunately, I don't have a good name. So many things could be explained by HQ, could be illustrated in HQQT already at dimensions one and two. And there was a question if everything could be put down to one, but maybe two is also important. So proper structures for higher dimensions are not found yet. I mean deep structures. Okay. Now. It was an advertisement. Why to understand it? And following advertisement, I will spend a lot of attention on examples, not only on general structures. Okay? So I follow my own experience with the group theory. And maybe someone could find his favorite example and uh, go on with it. Okay. So now, once again, on dimension one, we have an interval of the length t, and factor correspond to it e to the minus t h minus d t g where h is commutator of q and g such that q square equals to zero g square equals to zero So it's very simple. Now, let us come to examples. And I'll try to explain not only these examples, but mostly where you can find these examples. Example number one. So it just stopped being focused again. What uh, right now? Right now it is focused. Okay, so please tell me when it stopped being focused. Sure. The space V 
in the space of differential forms on X. Q is D. G is D star. We actually, we can find this example in many places in supersymmetric quantum mechanics. We can find this plus various generalizations. We can find this also in the gauge fixing. So it's uh, Lorentz gauge fixing. We also can find this in group theory. If X is a group manifold, and there are other examples. Actually here, D could be deformed to D plus omega, where omega is one form. And this is known as the Novikov deformation. It turns out that already trivial deformation like this is interesting. And this is called Witten deformation. This deformation is not trivial because of the F is considered big. It grows at infinity and this perturbation, even it looks exact, is not small. I mean, it's a proper function on a non-compact manifold, right? Uh, I don't know what proper means, but it grows at infinity. I mean, uh, it tends to infinity at infinity. Yes. So. Okay, so it is this example. This example has an interesting version. I will call it example one point five. No, it's better to call it one prime. Where V is a space of PQ form on the complex manifold X. Q is the bar and G is D bar star. So this is called extended. Andrei, do you mean Super. omega on omega uh, dot point uh, uh, dot q? All right. Do... Right. It's it's a misprint, of course. It has uh, interesting deformations, say of the type, like this. And uh, this is called uh, singularity theory. It has also deformation of the type like this. Now this is called the formation of complex structure where mu is built running. Actually these examples are completely without, combined together. Probably without second D. Right. Whereas no here D bar plus mu D. The formation of complex structure. D is on the other side. Okay, so 
here we have a plenty of room to deform. So things that happen here would be about deformation thing. So it's a key point in type B topological string theory. It's actually it's field theory limit, and there are ideas that this field theory limit is exact in some sense. Okay, so let me come to example number two. So Q is D again. Now G is IV. So it's contraction of the vector field. Of course, the space is the same. And H is, of course, LV, lead derivative. Now, this example is uh, quite different in spirit. I would say this example is geometrical or enumerative. I call it like this because in this case, it's easy to understand this object. It is just the flow along the vector field V along the time T. Of course, uh, here I want to say that not all vector fields are good because in some vector fields, there is a runaway phenomenon. It means that we go to, to the end of the space as a finite time. And it's clear because uh, it's quite dangerous to exponentiate the unbounded operator. But still, for finite T for good vector fields, it produces something geometrical. Namely, it's clear how it acts on the differential form. You may say that uh, smooth differential form is not that geometrical. However, we can replace this differential form by delta form concentrated on some, say, cycle or better figure. Okay, let me call it cycle. Ah, I'll put, I'll call it Z. So it will, it will be a chain. Then this evolution is geometrical in the following sense. Here we have a manifold X. We have a figure Z. Then we have this flow. And this flow brings Z into a new Z of t. So <clears throat> what we are doing in example number two. In example number two, we are moving figures. And what we can also do, we can intersect figures. And that's why I call it enumerative example. So what kind of problems could we ask in this enumerative example? We may ask two types of problems. 
the first problem, so how to get a number? To get a number, we should intersect. Let me try to intersect. There are two questions of the intersection. First question is an intersection after after we evolute during the time t, fixed time t. And second question, any time. It's basically clear that if you answer the first question, the answer is uh, T independent. I mean, here you ask about chains. So, ah, okay. uh, I mean, if, if the right. chains are cycles, right. then oh, the answer right. is independent. Okay. We can ask but we could also ask for chains, but... <laughs> we can also ask for chains. But let us be specific and ask for cycles. Then it's clear that uh, the first problem, problem with fixed t, just, just does not depend on t. Basically, it's because let me put here c, let me put here C tilde, actually deltas. I integrate. So if these are cycles, this is uh, T independent. However, if we ask for any time, you see here is uh, an issue. So people from the United States used to say that Russians uh, do not understand between A and Z. So first question was for Z time T, and second question is for any time T. To do this, we need to use the uh, higher thing. We need to drop DTG from the exponent, and uh, that's why we get this, and here we have an integral over, over R plus, and this is more interesting problem. And uh, this difference between T, between any time and fixed time was completely missed by so-called mathematical ph physics people. When uh, in the year 93, after extensive study of topological sigma models, Kansevich came up with the question of the curved passing uh, through points, it became clear that it's not the question in TQFT. But this equation is in HQFT because the positions of these points could be arbitrary on the world sheet. And people were thinking of in terms of TQFT where positions were fixed. And in this case, answer was very simple and had nothing to do with the interesting numbers. And uh, it was actually a shame for community, I mean from mathematical physics, to miss this important issue. You see, here we already see the structure of H. Already in this issue. And we will see this uh, higher structure when we will do the formation theory. So these are two examples. And now let me come to the most striking example. 
Sorry, what was missed? It was missed that we need to consider like differential forms on configuration space and not fixed points. So if you ask the question, suppose you are mapping a curve, a CP1, into the target space such that fixed points go to cycles. The answer is very simple. It's actually based by, uh, it's governed by the ring. However, if you ask the question that the image goes through cycles, say through points, it means that pre-image uh, of the intersection could be anywhere. This is a problem on the configuration space of points, and you need to integrate over this space. And that's why you need this H. Sorry, but, but people consider integrated integration of a world sheet, right? People, so actually the story was like this. People consider it formally. Uh, uh, writing uh, general formulas. So they were saying that in abstract conformal field theory, you would have this, you would have that. However, they forgot to study this example. No, it's true. So when people saw this uh, Kansevich paper, the theory was a great thing. Because the equation was known from 91. And the fact that everybody missed this example was a shame. And this was because of this misunderstanding of what we are doing, HTQFT or TQFT. So what we are studying, the constant function of the moduli space of source, or differential form. So people just missed this example. So now let me come to the most striking example. It's very simple, but it's uh, very unusual because, because before you might think that uh, the space of states should be a space of differential forms. So it is Q TQFT or HTQFT because there are so-called equal number of bosons and fermions. So that, that's, that's what you may feel. However, let me give you the example number three. That is the most striking for me. So consider quantum mechanics with the space of states V and Hamiltonian H. And what's important, no restrictions on V and H. V is not even Z to gray. Now, make the following quantum mechanics. With the space V is V tilde times C squared. Times C11. Yes, thank you, Leva. C11. C11 means one C in uh, even grading, one in odd grading. And I think there is a vertical, I mean, it's, you, you should put yes. a vertical line between yes. these ones. So, thank you, thank you for, exactly. So, take an H. So consider the system from the point of view of quantum mechanics. We have a space of states and another auxiliary system that, do, that does not interact with this system. And Hamiltonian would be H tilde, H tilde, zero, zero. So no Hamiltonian here. However, I'll write in black because it's striking. 
and it has a cube that is H zero 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 and it has G so that is one zero zero zero. If we anti commute, sorry, H two we will get this. Let me tell you why it's striking. We did almost nothing. Say this space of states is here with some Hamiltonian. I used to say, suppose the space of states is say, L2 where. Solid body, very complicated space of states. And this system is somewhere near, nearby. Maybe not necessarily nearby, maybe on the moon. It doesn't matter. They are not interacting through Hamiltonian. Nevertheless, the system is an example of uh, HTQM. A kind of unusual. So you may think that uh, you should expect this. Suppose the system quantum mechanic tilde had an Lagrangian description. I don't like Lagrangians, but just imagine that it has it. Then the second system also has a Lagrangian description. So B C R odd. So the quantization of the second system is the following. V B C is two dimensional. It is a span of one and C. So B is D over D C. So G is just B. And finally, Q is C H tilde. Then you may say, come on, we know the system. This is, uh, this BC dot is just uh, Gauge fixing of one dimensional gravity, etc. I will say yes. It's it. However, it, uh, it is still the fact that the total system is universal, could be constructed for any original quantum mechanics, and has very simple description. And is uh, H is it's higher to, it's higher topological. So this system is of course the prototype of uh, the bosonic string theory. In the bosonic string theory later on, this guy would come conformal field theory with central charge 26. And this would be replaced by the chiral BC system. Like here, they are decoupled in terms of uh, Lagrangian. However, Q is coupled. So here Q is constructed from operators of both of the system. And later on, uh, here we will have uh, 
Sovereign generator for energy momentum for the different morphisms. But this is the simplest example. So, if we look at these three examples, we will see that uh, it looks that there are topological quantum mechanics of two types. Topological quantum mechanics of one type, example one is like especially example one prime is like uh, b model example enumerative is like a model while this is something like bosonic string and if you and if you ask me do i have a one-dimensional version of super string i will say I, I don't really know. I haven't studied this question. So here there are these examples. And I apologize that I was very brief last time because uh, this is the basic. We will use this example a lot in understanding what's really happening in uh, in what in relation between HTQFT and uh, so-called physics so use so elaboration of this example would lead us to the following questions that I mentioned be before it is this example who would explain what is the energy splitting? What is the scattering? These two things look different, but uh, they are really here. So all examples related to physics come out of here out of here a little generalization also this one what is interesting is that this equation could come from as far as i understand example like three and also like two and this is interesting that uh, similar equations could come out uh, from uh, different examples because of course uh, there could be equivalences between examples and mirror symmetry is kind of equivalence between examples of type one and type two. And it's very interesting to find uh, examples when uh, type three and type two are mixed, not at the level of final answers, but uh, on the intrinsic level. And also, once again, there is a question uh, try to find example like. Uh, world sheet supersymmetric superstring and there is also not completed example that is called pure spinner superparticle It's interesting that it has manifest Q. Everybody understands what is Q here. But uh, it is not clear what to take as G. And this is the problem that, is, that has, I think, partial solution. But we will discuss it later when we'll come to this place. 
Okay, maybe I have spoken like 40 minutes, so now it's a good time to make a break. Yes, so let us make, let us have a, a five minutes break, okay? Are you aware? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, uh, Andre, so yeah. uh, I, maybe, I, I think I maybe will need to leave in some uh, in a few minutes uh, and maybe then come back. Uh, so I will miss the part of the talk. Okay, so you, you can see it in recording and we can also discuss in private. Uh, sure.
Okay. So let us continue. So I erased almost everything except one formula. How Q looks like. And here I want to make the following remark. Cohomology. of this Q correspond to kernel of H tilde. From here, I can make many interesting consequences. First consequences coming from physics. And it's called a relativistic particle. A relativistic particle. Suppose that H tilde is okay. I can even give Lagrangian. So Lagra let Lagrangian be P dot X mu dot and let Hamiltonian tilde, okay, this is tilde, be equal to P square minus M square. So as an operator, X tilde is the inversion minus M square. The cohomology of such Q are solutions of free wave equations. And this claim is claim Gordon. So here we start our dictionary. Relation this higher topological stuff with with physics. So cohomology something that we used to think of as coming from mathematics becomes the three fields. So one may guess that operations on cohomology would be amplitudes. And later we will come to this. So now I am trying to explain things in a different way, not uh, Mathematically, motion, deduction, deduction, deduction. Whenever something happens, I tell you how it would develop later. So this is physics one. Second point also may be considered as coming from physics.
second point is called level splitting. So what the hell is level splitting? The idea would be that we will start from Hamiltonian that has degenerate kernel and something else. It's a spectrum. And we could ask two questions. Suppose we are deforming the theory. To deform a theory, it's enough to deform the Hamiltonian. So when we deform the Hamiltonian, typically level energy splits and the it is not interesting. So there are two questions. A. Does anything stay in kernel? And there is more intricate question B. Describe level splitting. This second problem was started by Fermi. Many years ago, like in 40s. And he found some rules how to do it. And let me tell you what the rules of Fermi are in one to one correspondence with the induction of differentials after contraction of cyclic complex. A cyclic complex. That I will come out right now. So this is. It, it was about 40s, 50s. Where two people were studying the same problem. For me in physics. And the ray in mathematics. So for me, for me studied the level splitting in the atom under uh, magnetic perturbation, Larry studied very different things. He studied topology of fiber products. How your problem is the same. And these two problems would be united in this framework. Quite surprisingly, that array actually answered the question A. However, for me, not being mathematician, answered proper question that is deeper, question B. So it's kind of announcement what would happen later.
And this example is the baby example for the example that scattering amplitudes in the theory of relativistic particles are higher operations in cohomology. So we will come to this. By the way, when I'm saying this, I am not crazy. You may ask me a question. You know what I'm surprising? I am surprising that uh, you are not surprised. Maybe the sound is not good. But before doing different examples right now, or elaborating with examples, let me say that I forgot the example number four. So example number four is the start its contraction. of a cyclic subcomplex. This example is uh, quite similar to example number three. However, it appears in a very different context. Here I'll study just arbitrary homological algebra. While in example number three, you may think that I was doing with physical quantum mecha mechanics plus BC system. But they are very similar. So in example number four, I have the following data. Vector space V that I denote as a, that would be a direct sum of what I call infrared plus ultraviolet. Okay, since we are expecting to be mathematical physicists, I'll give her physical names. In uh, mathematics, I will say that this is a cycle of subcomplex. Sub so, Q acts diagonally okay and in the ultraviolet there is homotopy H Then I have very simple representation. So G. So of course we assume that homotopy acting on infrared variables is zero. that G is H and uh, of course H 
in projector on V ultraviolet. So, sometimes it happens. that uh, it was hard to find to find harmonica. Sometimes it happens that the only thing available is Such that sorry, Andre. Yes. Um we cannot or I cannot read it. It's cut off from the the screen, so okay, sorry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll erase this. So sometimes it happens there was G such that so we could we read now? Yes, now it's good. Thanks. If some operator H such that H applied to V infrared is zero. First condition and second condition H is positive. Define. Then we can go to previous example. We can say that that H small is what? It is just G over H. Or we can write it. Okay, so, so let us restrict to this thing. And uh, since here there is a projection on the ultraviolet, this thing is, is well defined. Okay. So this is the example number four. Now, let us come to, to the following issue. Now I'm cleaning the board. 
And uh, I will try to work out the issue called deformation. of this structure. So there are actually two ways to do this. And one is to write down something general and another is to start with an example. So this time I decide to I, I want people to understand me better. So I will go from example to the general uh, idea. So let us study example three. Here is the main object is is what is uh, h tilde t plus b dt so we just clear how to deform this universal solution I will not say that it is the unique deformation, but uh, there is such a deformation. Go from H tilde to H tilde plus delta H tilde. It would be interesting to see, are there other deformations? However, it depends on the potential structure of the tilde theory. And uh, if we don't know anything about this theory, we cannot deform in a universal way. So consider this type of deformation. So Q goes to Q plus C delta H. Of course, it is clear that deformed Q squares to zero since, uh, since C squared equals zero. Let us see what happens with I. Delta I is, of course, Okay, let me put minus two. Equals to. So why I need to put here delta H tilde and expand. E to the, sorry, not to plus infinity, to T. Minus T minus T prime. So I, I'm sorry e. that I've missed uh, the, the part uh, of the talk, but B is just G. Uh, yes, but, but, but this is example. Okay, in this example, it is what? I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, is, okay, no, no, never mind. Okay, just, just keep going. I will catch up somehow. Yes, yes. So, so, so this is example with the Lagrangian equals Lagrangian tilde plus B stop. Okay, okay, sure. So Hamiltonian is H tilde, sure. and uh, this is B, and this is a deformation of Q. <coughs> so here we write delta H e to the minus T prime H. DT prime. And there are, so this is the first order deformation. 
So this is clear from the manifest construction. We are deforming this exponent, and second thing is not changed. However, we need to try to understand this deformation in terms of original i. In sense, if if it is possible to understand it. So here we have an integral. So most probably, we need to extract from this i the one form. Then, then maybe we should expand. So what I'm going to say is that this delta h may be understood as the anti-commutator of b c delta h tilde. Now, it has a meaning. We understand that C delta H tilde is Q closed. So this thing is a Q closed observable O. And now, what stands here is the integrated correlator. Anti-commutator comes because we are changing T prime on the left and T prime on the right. So it is You see, it may look that I am rewriting uh, trivial things. However, despite they are trivial, they are correct. When I want to get one form, I expand from here and from here, and I get anti commutator. So, in the last formula, uh, we do not have O. We have C delta. H, this is O. Right? Okay, okay. O this, C delta C, H. this C delta H tilde is exactly O. Okay. No, so I, I'm just rewriting things. And uh, it is better to call it, call it O0. And here, differential form comes from this H evolution operator, higher evolution operator. So if I actually expand, So I'm just writing uh, trivial manipulations. I would like to call this O1. And this object is, of course, one form. That's what I call, why I call it O1. And this O0 and O1 
were of course introduced by Witter. And he observed that under the correlator, namely here, D of sorry Q of O R equals D of O zero. You see, these brackets mean that it stands inside. And this thing is called Witten's descent. So, you know why I like one dimensional model. In one dimensional model, everything is finite, finite dimensional explicit, and we can check uh, different assumptions of Edward Witten. So, Edward Witten says, basically, that we can deform topological theory using using these things that is the same. This is a particular example. And moreover, Q gets deformed to Q plus O zero. Sorry. Uh, do you like need uh, O2, which is? No, no O2 where everything is one dimension. So uh, O1 is one form. So yes, yes. So, one uh, uh, is automatically uh, zero. Okay. So maybe even today I will come to the Witten's mistake that he overlooked because he was considered higher dimensional examples <coughs> and uh, things were not obvious. However, in one dimensional example, everything is clear. Okay, so in order to make mistakes, you need to invent something. And if you invent something interesting, for sure, you would do mistakes. So development always goes like this. You invent something, you are making mistakes, and then the followers are correcting your mistakes. If you invent something and, and not doing mistakes, it means that you are not inventing, inventing anything serious. So let us check this that we saw from the very definite example, finite dimension, everything clear, is just a statement in linear algebra. Okay? Maybe it's true in general. So now, let me make several modifications here. I don't even want to erase too much. I'll erase this BC. I have put here G DT prime. Here I want to put O0. And here I would like to put T prime 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 H plus G D T prime. Uh, 
So left hand side is called the correlator of O1. integrated or R plus. You see, I write it in, in this way, sorry, of O zero. I write it in this, in this way because in higher dimensional generalizations, we will not get this explicit formula. However, considerations, it would be similar. But uh, I start with dimension one, where everything is explicit. So, If this stands at T prime. So now let me expand. And if I expand here, I of course get Sorry, where's T on the left without a prime? Here. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm not integrating over R plus. I'm integral integrating over an interval. Okay. Thank you. So I get this. And here is dt prime. And I can omit here higher powers of dt prime because dt prime, uh, well, this dt prime kills dt prime is here. It is the same. Now, what can I do? I call this E or delta E. We can't see on the left. If you're writing something on the left, we cannot see it. Ah, thank you. I forgot. So this is delta E. Now, let me commute this delta E with Q. So Q would fit here. Here I'll have Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian will give me total derivative. O goes to the left and to the right, and it will be exactly O0 commutator with E. So this is the first term from the condition that Q plus O zero commutes with I plus delta I up to a sign that I could miss to the first order. So actually I plus delta I is a deformation where Q is shifted this way. From this, one can have a good idea that uh, the second order
oh zero oh zero t t prime would be what we actually want integral from zero to t so uh, it was exactly edward witten claim on the global deformation and naively naively it goes as before like we apply q let us call it delta 2i to delta 2i q hits here we do the same trick and it gives O zero delta one I however here is a mistake and mistake comes from the following fact On the one hand side, Q plus O zero square is not zero. It is O zero square. So this deformation would not deform us where we expect to get the second place is the region where sorry here i need to put t2 primes where t prime and t2 prime hit each other if you try to jump one around the other You will get this O squared term. So this is not a deformation. And we may say that the fact that this is not a deformation comes from what place? comes from the difference of this contribution and this contribution jump so this is a jump and this jump is really an integral of all of two prime O of T over what? What is the difference of these two points? It is the boundary of disk in one dimension. It is exactly two points. And uh, this is exactly the phenomena that uh, Edward Witten missed. Because uh, when he and his followers are writing what they call topological observables, etc., they're just putting these integrals, not caring that these points could collide. And 
and here this argument may be generalized. One second. I think I'm not going too fast and I think I'm not going too slow. I can change my speed in two directions. I don't want to hurry up. In particular, because the topic that I am explaining is missed in the literature. So when people discuss different things in different theories, they are typically ignoring this issue. So generalization. Suppose you have I and you want, so suppose this is B-dimensional theory. And you want to deform. are deforming it by correlator of O D and that satisfies the science equation D O D sorry Q O D is D O D minus one plus other equation q all d minus one is d o d minus two and so on you apply q q to delta i d Once again, you have D of O D minus one. And you integrate it over sigma. And here you get something normal. Integral over the boundary of sigma of O D minus one as an operator acting on the boundary. So here everything is as before. This thing is called current. However, if you consider second order deformation, you have like above plus you have important contribution when these two points meet I will not write T, now it's P. 
P stands for the point. So here is the point P. Say P prime. And point P to prime belongs to the sphere. We have non trivial contribution of the sphere of O D minus one. And here we have, we can put here O zero and consider the D descending. So this is. Anomaly. And this anomaly was met in the literature in Kansai's uh, theory of deformation quantization. Okay? So we studied one kind, one phenomenon. So now, now I need to stop for a five minutes break. Maybe I go too slow. Uh, sorry, what uh, was missing in uh, Witten's uh, equation of descendant? So, uh, the contribution of the boundary where two points collide. Hmm. Despite this sphere could be small due to singularities, the contribution could be non-zero. Mm -hmm. In one dimensional example, we saw this as a jump. Mm -hmm. And it was missing. Mm -hmm. So is it you, by the way? Huh? Yes. It is Sam Hu, yes? Yeah. Yes, uh, and the similar thing was also missed in the paper uh, on Chern Science. Okay. Uh, because the Wilson line seemed to be one observable. It seemed to be topological. And it was not clear why two Wilson lines could not pa pass through each other. But they could not pass through each other because uh, their correlator has a jump. So like lines could not pass through each other, similarly points could not just go through each other. Or in other terms, you have additional contribution. So, whenever you have such deformation, you need to check if there are such contributions or not. Uh, is it a dimension dependent phenomenon? So, uh, uh, do we need uh, to observe both uh, such that their dimension add up Almost to the di uh, uh, to the dimension of the ambient space minus one. So, 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 of course. So it means that there is this operation, actually. So actually, it means that uh, studying this descent equation, we have found a new operation. 
integral of a circle. And uh, this is known, once again, this is known in uh, Kansevich paper on deformation quantization. That when you have uh, fields at two different points and they come close to each other and you integrate along a small circle one around another, you get, you get non-zero contribution. Despite the fact that a uh, circle is small. Because correlator is uh, big. I see. In conservative deformation quantization, you have roughly speaking integral of two of d phi. So it's like having a pole. And if you come to higher dimensions, correlator are even more singular or could be even more singular. As you know that uh, green function for operators become more and more singular when you go to higher dimension. So sphere is small, however propagator is big. So you get something very non-vanishing. But this secondary operation, it was, I mean, it was missed in the earlier works, but it didn't lead to any mistakes. It was just not considered. Um, it was. So when people say that theory could be deformed by integral of OD, just uh, just imagine there is no boundary. It is not quite correct because uh, when you integrate, you form such sphere and they potentially give non-vanishing contribution. So uh, in some theories, these contributions are vanishing. In some theories, not. It depends on what OD you are studying. In particular, let's come to quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, so with the example that I studied, this H could be arbitrary and variation of H could be arbitrary. So if you have coordinates here and coordinates here, nothing happens. You have no jump. However, if you have coordinates here and momentum here, there is a jump. So things depend on uh, on what O's you are studying. And uh, and if you are studying O O's such that this contribution is not vanishing. You are not you are not getting Q that squares to zero. Say Q on the boundary. So you think so naively you think that you have done. But you are not done because of these contributions. I just remember, for example, when people consider uh, topological A and B models in, in, in two dimensions and say deformed they by chiral operators, they, like in, in the early 90s, they would be careful to make sure that uh, contact terms do not contribute. Of course. So in particular, in A models, uh, I think they, they do not contribute, as far as I remember. However, uh, in B models, they typically contribute. 
Okay. And what does it mean? It means that if there are these not counter terms, okay, problematic terms, uh, you probably would like to to save the game by adding the counter terms. Because you see, it happens on the diagonal. So you need to try to improve it. And when you are improving it, you should be careful because you would like this term to be exact. However, from the general structure of this term, it is only too closed. And uh, the class of this term in cohomology is the abstraction. By the way, it's a reason uh, that if you are not working on Calabi-Yau manifold, you have you typically have a Torelli problem. And uh, since it's an issue, we may study what's going on in the model of type one prime. But uh, maybe it's better to study it when we will come Maybe it's better to study it next time. But here I, uh, I explain this problem. So we can call this problem ultraviolet problem because it comes from short distances. So, now let me speak a bit about another problem that happens here. And this I will call infrared problem. So please note that the ultraviolet problem in one dimension could be completely described by condition that Q plus O zero square square is not Q of O. Rather it is Q of O plus O squared. So if you want to make a deformation to the second order, you should solve not this equation, rather this equation. So if you work in terms, you may say that, let me put here epsilon. Now, let me put it this way. I'm sorry. I'll write it another way. We want to deform Q. So we will deform it as Q 
O plus epsilon square. I put here one. O two plus etc. And we want this to square to zero. Once again, it's one dimensional theory, everything is explicit. So you have Q square equals to zero. Q O one equals to zero. Then we have Q O two anti commutator equals O one. O one. So this is this problem that comes from uh, from the diagonal ultraviolet problem. And this is a way how to solve it. So obstructions. So where are obstructions? For homology class of this O101. If there is no cohomology, you should write that the theory is exponential Lagrangian plus integral of a sigma O D one plus integral over sigma O two but this is not the end, of course. Because if you find O1, you have uh, O2. You have another problem. When this O2 hits O1, right? And then it's just U O3 equals to commutator O2 O1. And you have to correct again. Etc. And this could be done only if you have no obstruction. So that's what actually, so that's what is actually a uh, deformation. You may ask how to find this O2. And it's an interesting story because to find O2, O3, etc., you need to use uh, homotopy. But today my time is limited and we will discuss it later. I would like to show you another problem. So this is ultraviolet problem. And now I'd like to show you the infrared problem. It's of course it's not a problem. It's ultra ultra so uh, infrared phenomena. So once again, it's an interval. And since we are, we have, we have complex, complex 
and this complex is deformed, we would like to see what happens with cohomology. How cohomology are or may be deformed. So let me try to start the equation. Q plus delta Q. And uh, in particular example, I can think about it as C delta H applied to V plus delta V equals to zero. So there is a naive idea how to do this. Just imagine that uh, cohomology sit in the kernel of H. So if I deform H, maybe this would be the projector to the space of cohomology. Could be that the limit as t goes to infinity provides us uh, the connection on cohomology. And the answer would be almost. Sorry, I think I have no time. Let, let me throw an argument towards this idea. Argument goes as follows. We just expand. And we have an integral. of O in quantum mechanics. Of O1 here. So Q applied to this integral of O1. gives us what? Gives us, you see, I think now I have no time to explain this. Let me, well, let me put it this way. Now it's already 1220. 
So we will discuss this. Okay, let me announce that we will discuss this during the seminar and we will find here the infrared problem. And once again, this infrared problem would have a cohomological interpretation. Okay, so let me announce what's go, what will what will happen later. We will study this problem, and then we will find a way how to change the setup such that in most cases problem would disappear. Okay, so uh, you you cannot kill cohomology. However you could change the setup. And, uh, and when you change the setup, you would find that abstractions, like I mentioned, so here there will be also an abstraction, would become not abstractions, but, and now it's interesting thing, but answers. So these abstractions would have meaning of level splittings or amplitudes. Okay, so here I want to announce abstractions as amplitudes. And you may think about this problem. Okay. So that's it for today, because I'm keeping trace with time. Now it's 12.20 uh, in Moscow. So I spoke for two hours, 20 minutes. Okay. And if you want to continue, come to the seminar tomorrow. Sure, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Andre. For <clears throat> Sorry, thanks for the lecture, Andre. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. So, Tadrushenko, you are in New York City? Yeah, well, New York State. I'm in Stony Brook right now. Ah, okay. <laughs>
You, by the way, you can stop recording, I think. Uh, that's us. Uh, we, we had a meeting. And so when we stopped the meeting, we are stopped. Uh, I also recorded myself. <laughs>